reason for the tobacco tax is, quite honestly, we have taxpayers of Utah subsidizing tobacco. If you look at the health care cost for smokers, we're talking $104 million a year in Medicaid costs. That, that effectively uh, goes out to about $535 per household that our taxes are going towards health care for smokers. And I, I know the, the, the overall formula for a good tax rate is, is to broaden the base and lower the tax. But you obviously don't want to broaden the base when it comes to tobacco. You want people to quit smoking. That is one of the reasons for the tobacco tax. This year in, in House Bill 219, what it did is increase the tobacco tax to $1.30. Basically, it went to a national average. It went to $1.30 a pack. And it had an automatic elevator in it so that every year, the tobacco tax would adjust to one cent above the national average, and that's where it would stay. So we wouldn't have to come back every year and fight for the tobacco tax. It would keep funding the cost. Now, the hope is, is people quit smoking and the actual tax revenue goes down. I'm perfectly fine, and that's how it was calculated out, and hopefully that's what would happen. Of course, the biggest base for tobacco companies is they need, their, their smokers are dying, so they need to bring new people onto tobacco, which is our youth. We know that by increasing the tobacco tax, we're going to stop about 19,000 Utah children a year from smoking. We know about 3,500 adults at that rate would quit smoking too. So the number one reason for the tobacco tax is, is to try to decrease the smokers and, and stop new ones from starting. Secondly is to recover money the taxpayers are paying to subsidize big tobacco. Um, as, as you've seen, a lot of the projections have coming forward in the next year, there is going to be a tobacco tax increase. That's what we're being told. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, the whole battle will be how much will it actually be. And again, I would like to see, you, you, I saw a calculation up there, I'm not sure where the numbers came from, it looked like at 50 cents a pack they were, they were estimating $54 million, but actually it would take about a, a dollar a pack to get $54 million. We know by increasing it about the roughly 62 cents we were going to uh, for 2010 budget would have created about $26 million in revenue. And then in, in the 011 budget, when they readjusted again at one cent above the national average, that would have gone up to $30 million a pack, or a, a, per year on, on revenue coming in. So, and then the idea is to take that money and put it back into, uh, you know, as Representative Dougal talked about in Health and Human Services, we, we changed how we did business there. We did a lot of cuts and a lot of good cuts. Uh, but we're at, the, we're at the base of where we can cut now, and, and we are starting to lose programs uh, that are essential. And I'm fine cutting the fat. I think we did, and I think we probably have some more we can. But we need to keep, keep that money back in the health care. As we talk about health insurance reform and, and making things accessible to people, we now have some money that we can use to help pay for the uh, for the cost of that. I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. The tobacco tax is very simple. Uh, those who are using the product that we're paying for their health care need to pay their share of the cost, and that's all we're trying to do. And then secondly is we're just trying to keep people from starting to smoke and giving people a reason to quit smoking.